Hello everyone, this is Bell's Books and we can be found on abooks.com. So first I would like to thank every one of you who have watched my previous videos. It's really been wonderful to know that some of you are as interested in books as I am. Because it's not just about the money that these books bring, but it's about a true love for reading. Books have always been my first passion and I received my first first edition at the age of six and I've just been infatuated ever since. So books give us the opportunity to learn, travel, escape into fantasy, and get an insight into other cultures, ideas, perspectives, and experiences. They enable us to become better, kinder, and more knowledgeable. So I usually say this at the end of my video, but if you really like what I'm doing, please click the like and the subscribe. It really encourages me to bring more videos to you. I'll be doing about two a week right now. Um, it does, as you know, take a bit of time to compile all this information, but I will get better at it and be bringing you more in the future. So, oh, also, if there's a certain author, title, book, or series you would like to see a video on, please just leave a comment in the section below and I would be happy to do that for you. So, the original video that I was going to do was of H.P. Lovecraft and H.G. Wells. I found some really interesting information about both of them, so I thought I would separate them into the two and begin with H.P. Lovecraft. So the first book we'll be talking about is The Shunned House. This was published in 1928 and it recently sold for $8,000 $962.50. Now, this is an extremely rare edition published by Arkham House. Uh, this edition has a preface by Frank Belknap Long, and this small volume constitutes the rarest book in the Arkham House canon. Although you could actually argue that this is not a true Arkham House title at all. See, The Shunned House was Lovecraft's first published book. In 1928, about 250 copies were printed posthumously by W. Paul Cook for the Recluse Press. However, at that time, the sheets weren't bound at all. Later, about 150 of those sheets found their way to Arkham House in 1959, where they were offered for sale, still in the unbound state. Now, about 50 of those were sold just with no cover. The rest, of course, didn't. So they ended up um, going to Durlaff, and they were bound as an official publication in a really nice, deep black cover um, of Arkham House in 1961. So at that time, Lovecraft's reputation as a writer of weird fiction didn't translate into book sales. He barely eked out a living, publishing in the pulp magazines of that time. The unbound copies of this book sat largely unsold in Arkham House until they began moving them in the early 1950s. So the copy you see on your screen is one of those lonely 100s, and it's the jewel in the crown for Arkham House collectors. It's actually believed that there are only a few in this binding, in this printing, left in existence. So the copy you see is probably one of the best copies that you'll find. The book itself, The Shunned House, is a title based on an actual house in Providence, Rhode Island. It was built around 1763 and it is still standing at 135 Benefit Street. See, Lovecraft was familiar with the house because his aunt Lillian Clark lived there in 1919 to 1920. She was a companion to Mrs. H.C. Babbitt. However, it was actually another house in Elizabeth, New Jersey, on the northeast corner of Bridge Street and Elizabeth Avenue that compelled him to write this story. See, it reminded him of the Babbitt house on Benefit Street, and later the image just came to him with renewed vividness. It finally caused him to write a horror story with its scene in Providence and with the Babbitt house as its basis. The second book is The Outsider and Others. 
This was published in 1939 and it sold recently for $1,673. The Outsider and Others is a collection of stories by Lovecraft. It's a rare Arkham book and it's the first that they completely published for him. It had a very limited run of only 1,268 copies. It went out of print early in 1944 and it's never been reprinted. So this dust jacket that you see features a montage of drawings by Virgil Finlay. He was the illustrator for Weird Tales magazine. So this book was described as the beginning of serious specialist publishing of fantastic fiction in America. In 1937, after the death of Lovecraft, his two friends, August Derleth and Donald Wandre, they gathered a collection of his best works in an attempt to get them published as a memorial volume. Now at the time, none of the publishers were interested and nobody wanted to publish this. So the two decided to form their own company. Now they named it Arkham House based on a town featured in many of Lovecraft's stories. They had the express purpose of publishing all and only Lovecraft's work into hardcover. But even at the bargain price of the time, only 150 copies were sold. Uh, note, the original Outsider was printed by the George Banta Company of Wisconsin in an edition of 1,268 copies. The book was over 550 pages with very small print. So it sold slowly but steadily. The next book is Shadow Over Innsmouth. This was published in 1936 and sold for $5,676.25. This was a horror novella written in November through December of 1931. This is actually the only one of Lovecraft's stories that was published during his lifetime. The town of Innsmouth is based upon his impressions of Newburyport, Massachusetts, which he visited in 1923 and again in the fall of 1931. Later, in 1935, William L. Crawford's Visionary Publishing Company began the process of issuing the novel into a book. The project came to fruition in November of 1936, although the copyright page declares the date of publication as April 1936. Uh, the reason for this was that the book had so many typographical errors that Lovecraft was not pleased and he made them make corrections which skewed the publication date. And after Lovecraft's death, the story appeared in an unauthorized, abridged version in the January 1942 issue of Weird Tales. So, both of Lovecraft's parents died in a mental hospital and some critics believed that a concern with having inherited a propensity for physical and mental degeneration is reflected in the plot of The Shadow of Innsmouth. It also shares some themes with his earlier book, Facts Concerning the Late Arthur German and His Family. See, in this book, the mind of the narrator deteriorates when he's afforded a glimpse of what exists outside his perceived reality. This is a central tenet of cosmicism, which Lovecraft emphasizes in the opening sentence of The Call of Clulu, which reads, The most merciless thing in the world, I think, is the inability of human mind to correlate all of its contents. The fourth book is Beyond the Wall of Sleep. This was published in 1943, and it recently sold for $2,868. This book is a companion novel to The Outsider and Others, and it's one of the most difficult Arkham books to acquire. It's the second publishing of Lovecraft's work, and only 1,217 copies were ever printed. When this was published, a New York Times reporter was noted as saying, this book consisted mostly of Lovecraft's lesser writings. It included poems which tended to reveal his weaknesses rather than reveal his stature. 
it was considered as really an afterthought volume and with the fiction only as being minor. So this was not particularly favored uh, by the literary community. Okay, book five is Dagoon. This was published in 1965 and it recently sold for $836. Dagoon was initially published in 1919 in The Vagrant. It's considered Lovecraft's first work that embraced the concepts and themes that his writing would later be known for. One of his biggest influences actually was Edgar Allan Poe. Um, among the earliest of Lovecraft's stories to see print, Dagoon is the first of the author's Arkham Cycle tales, which eventually formed the basis for the popular Kulula mythos, which is the modern Lovecraftian brand. This story is actually remarkable for a number of reasons, especially historically, as it's the genesis of one of the more powerful shared mythologies and literature. Here there are two notable aspects which help to illustrate the pessimistic ideals at the core of Lovecraft's cosmic stories. Both the fact that Dagoon is presented as a suicide note and the circumstances around naming the story's monster paint a picture of a world in which we humans are unimaginably insignificant, born to doom without the knowledge of our bleak circumstances, and cursed to suffer at even the slightest enlightenment to the true nature of all things. See, Dagoon is a somatic god that has appeared in popular works of authors, likely inspired by Lovecraft. It is also seen in the characters in George R. R. Martin's A Song of Fire and Ice. The characters were likely heavily influenced by the poem. In the lore of the Elder Scrolls, Dagoon translated to destruction or destroyed. Now this book was also printed in very limited copies of 3,000 editions. It has a foreword by Lovecraft's friend, August, the Arkham publisher, and the illustration on the dust jacket was done by Lee Brown Coy. The next book is Three Tales of Horror. This was published in 1967 and it recently sold for $776.75. Three Tales of Horror is an illustrated collection of series that was published in 1967 by Arkham House. It includes 15 drawings by Lee Brown Coy and Lovecraft was once described as having exerted an incalculable influence on succeeding generations of writers of horror fiction. Stephen King was quoted as saying, Lovecraft is the 20th century's greatest practitioner of the classic horror tale. See, Lovecraft was responsible for his own fascination with horror and the macabre and was really the largest influence on his own writing. And the seventh book is Marginalia. This was published in 1944 and also recently sold for $776.75. So this is a collection of fantasy, horror, and science fiction short stories. It also has essays, biographies, and poetry by and actually about Lovecraft himself. It was the third collection of Lovecraft's work to be published by Arkham House only 2,035 copies were printed. When this book was published, Lovecraft's career was described as an effective protest against natural laws, against genuine scholarship, and against literary craftsmanship. The fiction was actually considered juvenile. Lovecraft's own bibliographer described the volume as a glorified magazine in book format. And the eighth book is the Dream Quest of Unknown Cutoff. This was published in 1955 and sold for $717. So this book was one of only 50 specifically bound copies from a total of 1,500 copies printed. It's a novella that began around the autumn of 1926 with a final draft completed on January 22, 1927. It remained unrevised and unpublished during Lovecraft's lifetime. 
It is both the longest of the stories that make up his dream cycle and the longest work to feature protagonist Randolph Carter. This book can be considered one of the significant achievements of that period of his writing. It combines elements of horror and fantasy into an epic tale that illustrates the scope and wonder of humankind's ability to dream. It was posthumously published by Arkham House in 1943 and it is currently published by Ballantine Books in an anthology that also includes The Silver Key and Through the Gates of the Silver Key. The next book we'll discuss really seems like a magazine. It's called Marvel Tales and this is Volume 1, published May of 1934. This volume sold recently for $597.50. In the 1920s and 30s, pulp magazines were flooded in weird fiction with supernatural horror, apocalyptic cults, and forbidden texts. Foremost among writers was H.P. Lovecraft, a prolific contributor to Weird, weird Tales magazine. His dark and his brooding tales of horror and the vast conspiracies were represented in all of his works. The tale spawned into an expanded shared universe of evil and supernatural constructed by a group of Depression-era writers known as the Lovecraft Club. It consisted of August Ehrlich, Clark Ashton Smith, psycho author Robert Block, and Robert E. Howard. It is through Howard, the creator of Conan the Barbarian, that Lovecraft's shadow really just cast a warped darkness over the Marvel comics that we know today. And lastly, we will talk about The Shuttered Room. This was published in 1959, and it recently sold for $4,370.50. 4, this book is an anthology of fantasy, horror, short stories, Essays and Memoirs. It was released in 1959 by Arkham in an edition of 2,527 copies, and it was the fifth collection of Lovecraft's work. His friend August, who edited and published the book, he also wrote the title story, The Shuttered Room, as well as The Fisherman of Falcon Point. He based the novels from lines of Lovecraft's story ideas left behind after his death, and then he billed himself as posthumous collaborator. Although most copies of the book have the usual Holliston black binding, a few copies, possibly a, a dozen, have the less sturdy board covers and without the dust jackets. And then later, this book was made into a 1967 British movie. So that concludes the H.P. Lovecraft video. The next one I'll be doing is H.G. Wells, and I hope that you enjoyed it. I really do enjoy doing these videos for you. So again, thanks for watching, and please click the like and subscribe button. Okay, thank you and God bless you.